Hello everybody and welcome back to the Manx Virtual Railway. It's been a little while since my last video upload, so I apologise for that. Uh, we have been streaming fairly regularly and um, obviously I've been doing quite a bit of building. Um, so the, the I'll give you a bit of a quick status update. The northern line is complete as far as Sulby Glen. The Peel line is complete. The Foxdale line is complete. The Nokalo branch is being developed. Um, the southern line is, uh, the south line is as ready as far as Balasala. Um, there's still bits and bobs to do, like I haven't done all the stations up with little billboards and whatnot, but that'll come a little bit later on. Um, so today we're going to do a nice little short trip from St. John's up to Kirk Michael, a very popular spot on the northern line when it was open. Uh, you've obviously got Glen Willen, we've got the two viaducts to cross at Glenmore and Glen Willen, um, and some beautiful coastline. So without any further ado, let's go over to the railway. So you join us on a beautiful Manx summer's day at St. John's Station. Detect the sarcasm. Um, we've got two trains on the platforms. We've got the uh, the Peel departure and the uh, Northern departure. I haven't set it to, to depart at the same time, although you can see that on a video that I've uh, uploaded previously. Um just a quick caveat remember this is all standard gauge i don't have manx assets so we we don't have the bear peacocks or you know caledonia or anything like that unfortunately however they give a fairly good representation um these victory works 14 xx's um work really nicely um i especially like the br uh, livery on this one with the lining uh number 14 today which would be thornhill if it was a manx loco originally a manx northern railway number three We'll get some passengers on board. Let's check. We've got a green light. Let's just check this. Yep, we've got the uh, the route set nicely there. We are ready to go, basically. Let's just wait for that. Uh, those doors to close. Come on, guys. Get on. <laughs> These are uh, Gordon McKenzie freeware coaches who do a really good job of imitating the, uh, the Manx coach stock as well. I think they do anyway. At some point, I'd like to do a repaint. Right, we are ready to go. Let's uh, open that regulator. You'll quickly notice that my driving skills are not the best. There we go. Do that volume down just in case it's uh, being picked up in the microphone. Hello, close those cylinder cocks. So, another thing with having to uh, scale up to standard gauge is that the speeds do get scaled up as well. So, typical Manx locos, I think the average running speed was about 25 miles an hour. Um, that's actually quite hard to replicate on these standard gauge locos, they want to run quicker. So uh, 40 miles an hour is a much more typical kind of running speed for this one. And it's quite comfortable, that speed as well. 25 miles an hour, it does seem a little slow. Crossing the bridge there, and we'll see the peel line peeling off and heading downhill as we right climb. That's Slawalian in the background there, or the Witcher's Hill as I used to get told. There we go, just crossing the main road from St. John's to Peel. Anybody who's actually who lives on the Alaman will notice they've done some work to renovate the the line around here, the old line. The track beds at least, obviously the, the rails aren't there anymore. So we're climbing up to our first station which is Peel Road, or Poor Town as it was originally called. The guys who've uh, been clearing of this have, have done a really good job. They've, uh, they've cleared away the platform, and you can also see the old loading bank. So let's uh, let's start slowing down in preparation for uh, our pickup. I'm not the best at using the brakes on these. I tend to go all or nothing. <laughs> Some more water loaded in. These these there uh, XXs are very thirsty. Little whistle to uh, 
let them know we're here. I need to use a bit of handbrake. I think I might have over that. Oh, no, actually. Probably actually do. I forget this bit's uphill. Look at them checking their watches. We're not that late. So, of course, this is a, only a small station. It used to be quite popular back in the day, though. Um, people travelling from Ramsey to... Uh, Ramsey to St John's would rather uh, get off here and walk into Peel than have to change trains at St John's a lot of the time. They used to have an old uh, luggage van. Oh, my pathways disappeared. I had a little incident where I accidentally reinstated some of the landscaping, so uh, I might need to go back and uh, change that. <laughs> but yeah, there's a pathway that goes up to the road here. It's been buried. Oh, well. Right, off we go again. That was quick. Get those cylinder cocks open again. Don't want to uh, bust our cylinders. That would not be very nice. Look the rain effects on the, uh, the panel there. So on our right here, there was um, a loading bank. I haven't put it in just yet. Um, but it served the nearby quarry. If you look here, over there, there's a quarry. And um, again, <laughs> the landscape's not been done there. But um, a two-foot gauge tramway ran down here, horse-drawn. And they'd uh, offload onto the banks here. Yeah, the reason some of the... I've just noticed this. Some of the landscaping is... Um, I, I re-imported the DEM data. And it's, uh, it's covered up some of, some of my work. <laughs> it was all part of um, some of the line that I'd done. It, 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 was, it was a bit janky changing between gradients. I was trying to smooth it out. I've done more harm than good. <laughs> Steaming nice. Oh, I need to get those slender cocks closed, don't I? Silly boy. I want to get that damper open as well. Let some air into the firebox. Yes, now we're cooking with gas. Got enough coal on. Love running these cuttings. And you can see the quarry equipment there in the background. I thought I'd got everything. I must have missed that bit. At least the field's looking good. This is a lovely walk. Um, obviously, the track doesn't exist anymore, but the track beds have been kept pretty clear. Um, a lot of gorse bush. Gorse bush. So our next stop, well, I say next stop. The next station is technically St. Germans, but anybody who knows the history of the railway know that St. German station, unfortunately, never really attracted much traffic. There was a point when they were using it for goods quite a lot because they were uh, mining uh, gravel from the, the beach below, gravel and sand. But actually, John Cameron, the um, the, se the general secretary and the, the guy responsible for running the Manx Northern Line for a large part of its life, he, um, he actually let one of his employers use it as a house, basically. Um, he was a bit of a eccentric character I suppose but he was very well respected by his men he ended up going over to Blackpool and work on the tramways there interestingly in there, there was recently in Texas they found a, a Manx Northern Railway button a lot of workers cut their teeth on the Manx Northern line and then they head to America to try and make their money so we're not going to stop at St Germans we're just going to run through but we are going to slow down we don't want to don't want to hurt anybody when we're going through. The, uh, the station building's still there. It's now a private dwelling. There we go. And now we go on to this lovely uh, coastal scenery. Look at that for a view. <laughs> Probably be nicer on a sunny day, I'd imagine. See nice calmer seas there, apart from a few waves down the cliff top, cliff faces. Peel in the background. Can't really see it there. So quite a long extended run now up to uh, up to Kurt Michael. 
lots of little farms and uh, the odd countryside cottage. This is a section of the line, well, not, not just yet, but uh, a little bit later on when we get to the cliff faces. This is probably one of the main reasons the Manx Northern Line never really made money, was uh, the constant cost of having to upkeep the line round here. Not so bad here, of course, but when we get round to the, the Devil's Elbow and Gobby, De well, Gobby Dagan, then Cam, it uh, does become quite prone to landslips. There was a, a permanent wave gang permanently stationed along this section. As you can see we've got a bit of an embankment built up here. We've hit a climb there. Oh, I've, I've re I'm, too, I'm filling the water too much again. <laughs> Actually got quite a nice running speed there. 30 miles an hour is probably quite quite a good balance. I think the Manx Locos would be quite capable of that on a, on a good day. So just make a very weird noise outside my flat then. So this is the bit that would, would have caused problems is the uh, this lovely bit running around these cliffs. Do you think I might have overdone it on the gorse bushes there? I, I <laughs> it looks a little bit intense maybe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is a work in progress, so I'm not going to say it's perfect. I think I definitely need to uh, make that a little bit more uh, detailed. This uh, this little hut would have been the uh, the permanent way gang's little uh, tea cuddy storeroom, and uh, interestingly, the shed's still there today. If you if you walk along, you'll find uh, I, I say it's still there. It's completely ruined, but you will see the wooden panels and whatnot. It's quite an elderly construction. Yeah, this looks a bit better with a bit, a bit of grass, different bushes and things. Got the beach is down there. I do hate in train simulator how you get these peaks. Yeah, they look very ugly. So we're coming up to uh, Glen Cam, which is a massive embankment. And in fact, we'll go over and have a view from up here. This is the Devil's Elbow. Ignore the zombies. But yeah, quite a magnificent, ma magnificent kind of uh, achievement of engineering, uh, building that embankment there. Still very viewable today. I'm not sure where they got the material from. It does say. Right. We need to uh, slow down the regulator so we can build up a bit of pressure. Oh, why have I got that open? told you my driving skills are terrible the uh, coast road passes over here this is a bit unfortunately this is one where uh, I really couldn't make the bridge very similar to what what actually exists a very complicated real, um, arrangement there I mean if you, if you look at it today it's very difficult to kind of get what the original bridge was because there's been quite a lot of additions made to it it's very clearly been modified several times a lot of the bridges on the Manx Northern Line uh, needed kind of modifying at different points in their life. Yeah, build the speed back up there. I think we'll uh, just take our foot off the gas and, and we're on a, on a downhill gradient now. Still picking up speed, but uh, we need to pick up a bit, bit of boil, boiler pressure there. We're running a bit low. It's actually mostly downhill to uh, to Kirk Michael itself now. So we've got two viadu viaducts to cross first. We've got the Glenmore viaduct first, and then the Glenwillen one. A couple of bridges and uh, crossing points before we get there. I remember to whistle for those crossing points, guys. Don't want any flattened pedestrians. So we're coming up to the Glen, Glenmore Viaduct just now. In fact, that's us over it. Let's go and have a look from the road. That should be a nice, nice view. Yeah, not bad, not bad at all. Descending into a bit of a cutting now.
Shipman the crossing there. I think I might have uh, missed, missed the whistle on that one. Right, let's see where we are with Kurt Michael. We need to make sure we're going to go into the right platform. I also have a tendency to overshoot here because there's a downhill gradient into it. <laughs> Good chugging noise. I've actually installed the um, Steam Sound Supreme sound pack for this loco. And uh, general, I mean, not a big fan of the whistle sound to be honest, but the rest of the, the sounds are really, really good. Vast improvement on the stock. Bit of corn's got onto the line there. <laughs> of course, we've got the uh, the mountain chain run up the spine of the island, off in the distance there. And this is the Glen Willen Viaduct. We'll have a look from the cab on this one. Get that brake started. So yeah, you can see the campsite below. At one point, this was owned by the railway. They uh, they ran it and they they, they managed to uh, subsidise the running the railway a little bit with the uh, the money they made from Glen Willen there. Of course, this pathway led down to the Glen. So there was a, quite often there were there'd be specials run to Kurt Michael from the from the different stations. There we go, no platforms, but the station building and the goods shed are still in existence. They're now the headquarters for the uh, the uh, Encore Fire fire station base there. So nice to see that they've got a use. Of course, Caledonia returned to Kurt Michael last year. They, uh, they set up a bit of track and had the Loco and uh, MNR, the, the Foxdale coach, sat there. And there we are. We'll let our passengers off. They might be going for a, tri uh, a, a trip down to Glen Willen. <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, that's Kirk Michael in more of a general view. Of course, this field's actually all houses now, but it, I got a bit fed up of doing all the, the big housing estates, so I uh, I kept this one as field. I think it looks better for it, to be honest. I think this one as well. But yeah, so there we go. We're in Kirk Michael, as you can see. We've got the other... Uh, all the scenery done in the distance. We'll do a trip up to Balaf at some point. But uh, thank you for joining me. Um, I hope you've uh, enjoyed this video. If you've got any feedback, leave the comments. If you like what you see, then uh, like, subscribe, click the bell, all that business. Um, and join us on Facebook if you want to see more live streams. I'm, I'm doing the streaming there at the moment just because I seem to have more more people know about it there. But I may, I may move on to YouTube streaming at some point in the near future. Anyway, thank you very much for tuning in, guys, and uh, see you soon.